Fashion trends often get a bad rap, especially in fast fashion when things move so quickly and there are new items weekly. But trends aren't always a bad thing. They can be really fun to experiment with and they can help us evolve our own personal style. I think that they're a problem when you become a slave to the trends, when you let them dictate your own personal style instead of using them in a way that suits you. I see trends as a source of inspiration that we can pick and choose from. So we don't pick everything, but we just pick the ones that are right for us. After researching into this year's autumn trends, I think that there are actually a few lessons that we can learn from them. Not necessarily taking the full trend and running with it, but thinking about the philosophy behind that trend and applying it to our own personal style. If you don't follow or you don't want to follow trends, then don't. In fact, I actually applaud you for being so laser focused on what you like and your own style that you don't feel influenced by everything that's just buzzing around us daily. I've chosen the trends that resonate with me personally, but hopefully you can use Use these principles and apply them to the trends that you relate to. And I've also based these trends from an article on who, what, where, and I will of course link this article down below. If you're new here, I hope that you like this video and that you subscribe. My name is Adeline and I make videos about fashion and style every week. Before we get into the video, I do have two more things that I want to say. Apologies for the long intro. It's not normally my style, but I do just want to fit these two things in. So firstly, I just want to say thank you so much for all the amazing, kind words that you've all given me on my last video. I'm just speechless at how well received that video has been and yeah just thank you so much. And then secondly I did also get a couple of comments about how the sound quality wasn't that great. So if you've not noticed I am holding a microphone. I am supposed to clip this on me somewhere but I feel feel like you could hear my jacket rustling against it. So I'm just gonna be holding it for now. Figure that out later. I just wanted to film this video, but please leave me a comment um, in the comments. Leave me a comment in the comments. <laughs> leave me a comment just letting me know if this microphone is better or worse. I'm obviously always trying to improve my videos. So yeah, just let me know. So the first trend in this article is called Focus on Foundations. And it's all about, yep, you've guessed it, focusing on the basics. Honestly, this trend, it's not even a trend to me. I really think that this is a philosophy that we should all be adopting in our wardrobes, no matter what kind of style or aesthetic that you adhere to. So the style lesson that we can take away from this trend is that a cohesive wardrobe is made up of strong foundational pieces. If we go back to the image that they used in this article, we can see that there's a mix of looks here with denim and button downs, tailored coats, there's some sporty casual looks. You can see that Miu Miu look on the right. That look has been absolutely everywhere. But what we can see here is that there's a really big mix of looks. It's not a certain aesthetic that they are referring to. And I think that the point of this trend is just to bring it back to really good quality pieces. Focusing on fabrics that will last, on pieces that are well-made, pieces that suit your body type, and even buying from brands that match your values. I think there's there's also a focus on just really wearable looks, which I think is great for us as consumers. A cohesive wardrobe is made of strong foundational pieces, no matter what those foundations mean to you. It doesn't have to match the traditional capsule wardrobe of a white button down and black trousers and black blazer. If those pieces are not the pieces that you normally reach for, then you don't have to go out and buy those. Think about the things that you wear on rotation all the time. What are those pieces for you? A helpful exercise could be just to make a list of everything that you wear in the span of like two weeks and see which pieces you wear the most. That is your foundation. You might think that you are limiting your style by having just a really good core foundational wardrobe, but actually having a strong foundation means that you can experiment more with your style. By having these core pieces, it means that you can actually add more statement pieces with them and you've got those core pieces to wear with the statement pieces. The foundation of your wardrobe is the glue that holds all of your outfits together. My personal foundational pieces are tank tops, jeans, blazers, loafers. These are the pieces that I always wear. 
These are like my uniform pieces. I've spoken about this before, find your uniform. And these are mine. So I do spend quite a bit of budget on these pieces because they're the ones that I always reach for. I feel great in them. I feel comfortable in them. I can dress them up or down. And so they work really well with my lifestyle. Those pieces are the pillars of my personal style. And by having these pieces that I wear again and again, it just helps you develop your own sense of personal style and helps build that consistency in your wardrobe. So the next trend that I want to talk about is called check yourself. And it's all about that really classic check, plaid, gingham, whatever you want to call it, that really classic print. When it comes to patterns, there aren't many that I like to use in my personal style. And when I do wear them, I wear them quite sparingly. But I do like a classic print in a neutral color palette. Prints such as herringbone or plaid or pinstripe. They're such quintessential autumn prints and they just come back round every autumn. They have that really sort of back to school feel about them. And so I think that's why they always come back around this time of year. The thing is, like I said, they come back every year. And so I think it's less about the print itself, but more about how you're going to style it. What proportions are you going to use it in and what colors are you going to mix and match it with? So the style lesson that I think we can learn from this trend is how we can purchase and wear prints in a way that feels true to our style, but can also serve us in the future. In the Who, What, Where article, they've emphasized that these prints have come back in a bigger and louder way. If you want to go big and bold, then absolutely go for it if that's your style but perhaps think about maybe doing it in a neutral color palette so that you can work it into your future wardrobe as well. I think a neutral color palette helps give it that sense of timelessness, even if it is in a really big and bold pattern. I personally like something that's a bit more subtle, but again, that's just my personal preference. For example, when it comes to coats, Never say never, but I do personally like mine to be in solid colors. Whilst I like the idea of a checked coat, I just know myself and I think having a patterned coat, I, I think I would just get tired of it quite quickly. When I purchase coats, I think of them as a long-term purchase because coats are quite an expensive item. And so when I buy a coat, I don't think of it just for this season. I have to try and think of it, you know, for a few years ahead as well. However, if I did want to try a patterned coat, I know that I have a couple of herringbone blazers that I absolutely love. And so I would maybe think of going for a herringbone coat. It's slightly more subtle than a check print but it's still in that same vein of that sort of back to school you know pinstripe plaid herringbone they all have that same kind of feeling at least in my brain they do <laughs> i think that as well as knowing what you do like to wear having a good sense of personal style is also about knowing what you don't like to wear and for me i think that would be a checked coat i don't think i could bring myself to invest a huge chunk of money into a checked coat, unless it was on a really good sale, then maybe I would think about it. <laughs> I've also been eyeing up these plaid shirts from With Nothing Underneath. They are in like an 80% wool, 20% cotton mix. So they have this really nice brushed, brushed, that's really hard to say for some reason, brushed texture. <laughs> and so I have been eyeing up those shirts. I think they would be a really nice addition um, for autumn. And again, um, I do love to wear button downs. So I know that it's something that I could get a lot of wear out of. I do also have this very old plaid scarf that I almost forgot that I had. And so this trend actually reminded me that I already own something that's on trend and I don't need to really go out and get anything else. So again, we can use trends to kind of remind ourselves of things that we already own that we might have forgotten about. Like I said, I do love my herringbone blazers. And so I think I'm going to be wearing these a lot this autumn. And that's kind of my version of this kind of checked print. I think for me, the check is just, it's a lot <laughs> for my personal style. If it's something that you like, then that's great. But for me, I prefer something more subtle, such as a herringbone. And so this is a way for me to participate in this trend, but do it in a way that 
is in my own personal style. So the next trend in this article that I want to talk about is called hide and seek. It's essentially just leather. Leather, anything and everything. This is another great seasonal trend that comes back every year and one that really does make the rounds, especially when the cooler weather comes back. I've always had some sort of leather jacket in my wardrobe on rotation. I mean, I'm even wearing one now, which I will talk about in a second. And this year is no different. However, I think that we are seeing a lot more than just the standard leather jackets. We're seeing a lot more trousers and skirts and shirts and just everything that I think the style lesson we can learn from this is that in order to figure out how to add a new trend into our wardrobe, we must first take the time to figure out what we already like. So let me try to explain that a little bit further. I think that a way to work this trend into your wardrobe is to think about what pieces you already really love to wear. So if you love blazers, then you can try a leather blazer. If you're a skirt person, then try a leather skirt. If you love straight leg jeans, then try a pair of straight leg leather trousers or faux leather trousers. By sticking to things that you already like, but trying them in a different fabric or a different color, then you have a much better idea of how to style them with what's already in your wardrobe. Taking this jacket as the example, I know that I love kind of like plain button downs. I love wearing shirts as jackets. I love jackets that have collars. And so I knew this jacket was just going to be able to fit in seamlessly into my wardrobe. I knew I would be able to wear it on top of outfits that I've worn before and that it would go with them really easily. Another example is that I know I love straight leg jeans. And so when buying a pair of faux leather trousers, I went for the same sort of straight leg shape. And that way I know that I can wear it with a lot of the boots and the shoes that I already own. I also went for this sort of muted color because I know that it would go with the rest of the pieces in my wardrobe as well. I also love bringing in that leather texture just to create more dimension and interest in an outfit. So for example, I've worn it here with a wool jacket and just that mix of that smooth leather with that kind of brushed wool just gives a little bit more visual interest and yeah, just makes a better outfit. So that is my take on a couple of style lessons that we can learn from this year's autumn winter trends. It's less about adopting the trend fully, but understanding what it is you like about the trend and then adapting it to suit your own personal style and even what you already have in your wardrobe. I really hope that this video helped. So let me know what autumn winter trends you're gonna be trying out, or even if you're not gonna be trying them out at all, I'd love to know. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. I have so much more styling content coming up for this autumn winter season. I would love for you to be here to join me. Please remember to let me know what you think of this new microphone situation. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.